Welcome, welcome, welcome back everybody. This is the Open Bear TV and we are continuing with the story of Noah. Now, um, before we move on, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe right here. And of course, you can also ring the bell. And if you are a new subscriber, um, you can put it on the comment section. So next time I might give you a shout out for subscribing. Without any more talking or without further ado, let's get into the story of Noah. Last time we finished at the window, and uh, today we're going to continue in verse number uh, 17. Okay, so we're going to read 17 to 21 to 22. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all, fl to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee. And of every living thing, uh, of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female, of fowls of the after their kind, and of the cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing in the of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Now, so first thing we get is God's going to bring a flood of water to destroy all flesh. Now remember, um, in the video that I made before, I did mention that God does not actually <laughs> destroy people, but people choose to be destroyed. So Noah is building an ark for the saving of of his family, of course, and anyone else who wants to come in. So God is going to destroy the earth and he makes a way of escape for men. But the way it is spoken right here, where well, let's look at it again. It says, Thou shalt come into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife with thee so basically everybody else is gonna be dead so out of all the families that are living upon the earth at that moment only one family will be saved and some people um might say well, do you see how evil God is? He only wanted Noah to be saved. Um, no. God didn't want only Noah to be saved. God wanted to save everyone. But not everyone wants to be saved. Same way today. God wants to save everyone. But not everyone wants to be saved. So if you don't want to be saved, God is not going to force you to be saved. You have to be willing to be saved meaning you have to be willing to want to be with God so and when Jesus said as it was in the time of Noah so it shall be when the son of the, when the son of, when the son of man comes 
I don't think he's just about uh, the drinking, partying, and um, marrying and giving to marriage only. It's going to be, people are going to be wanting to be saved when it's too late. Because they don't really want to be saved. They want to escape punishment. So, that's one thing to keep in mind when reading the story of Noah. Now, let's keep on moving. Um, so, now, how is it that they are going to be, um, how would I put it? Mm. So, we let's say we have all these animals in the ark. Lion, bears, tiger, wolves and you know you, you name it the cows horse and snake and everything else how are these animals gonna be eat, gonna eat because we have some predators right and so verse 21 mentions and i'm gonna i'm gonna explain that part also and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten and thou shalt gather it to thee and it shall be food for thee and for them. So, let's talk about that part. Um, in my last video that I mentioned last time on all the videos, I made a video about the LGBT people making a song about converting your children. And I had a person commenting, commented on my video, which, respectfully, we had a great conversation. And that person mentioned about the story of Noah as it is, as that person think it's untrue because how could there be predators and none of the animals were killed well let's as i mentioned that person predators didn't eat meat until after sin so if you think about it how would god feed these animals in the ark it's pretty simple they're all gonna be eating her herbs and we have we have to understand this is not a natural thing this is a supernatural thing so now for those who believe that god exists i mean yeah nobody yeah whatever it be those so-called atheists talk about don't listen to them. They are fools because Psalm 14 verse 1 says the fool has said into his, into his heart there is no God. You can prove that. But it's okay. So, um, let's talk about that part. The predators. How would they be able to, how were they fed in the ark? It's pretty simple. They ate herbs. Now, what if 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 God is about to do something that miraculous to save people but even though most of them didn't want to be saved if he is going to be able to uh, bring a flood of water and whoever gets into the ark will be saved then God would also find a way to feed them without them eating without the without animals eating each other so um, let, let's think about the story of Daniel for a moment so Daniel was sent to the lion's den um, he was sent to the lion's den and then the next morning we heard that the lions had not eaten for what I think it was three days what does that mean? Well, that means the day he was sent to lions then, they had not eaten for two days. Now, imagine you in front of a lion, or not a lion, because it was a lion's den. So that means there were more than one lion. Imagine you in a lion's den where the lions had not eaten for two days. Do you think they would be looking at you? Like kitty cat. No. The only thing in the mind is food. 
all they see in them is before them is food. Now, how did Daniel survive the lions then? Because lions are predators. Well, the Bible says that God sent an angel to shut the mouth, the, the mouth of the lions. It's pretty simple. Now, the next day when they threw the other princes, the evil princes who were trying to kill Daniel, when they threw them into the lion's den, they had not even reached the bottom and they were already devoured by the lions. So, how is it that Daniel survived the lion's den while the other people did not? Well, you can think of it as the same way. How did those animals survive predators while they were in the ark? Let me tell you, it's one of two ways. One, either whatever food that Noah could gather, God used that to feed the, the animals every day. Because remember, when Jesus came and he fed the 5,000 5, people, he only, was, he, he only had five loaves of bread and two fish. And with that, he multiplied and fed the 5,000. So, whatever Noah took as food that he could, you best believe that God used that to feed those animals. The lions, the bears, the, the zebra, the elephant, every animal most likely was fed. So, again, before sin... Animals did not eat other animals. They don't eat flesh. They only eat herbs. So that means during the flood, God fed them with what he had primarily given them for food, which is herbs. Because the flood was a recreation type of the earth, then God will use the same type of food that he used before sin, as I were to say, this is the best diet. So that's what they were eating in the ark. They were not eating other animals in the ark. Let's move on. Um, so basically, when Noah took food, when the Bible says, and, and let me explain that part, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Let me actually talk about, mention that part. Um, we have to understand when when God says to Noah, you, it doesn't only mean just Noah. It means it's Noah and his family. And then them will be everyone everyone else, or in that case, the animals. Let's, let, let me show you why. So, you see when the Bible says in verse 18, but with thee, I will establish my covenant. But the thee is not just him. Why? Because it also mentions you're going to get into the ark, your sons, your wife, and your son's wives. So when God is speaking and says, with thee, it doesn't only mean just one person. It's meaning Noah's family. The covenant is with Noah's family. Because if Noah was the only person who was righteous and everybody else was evil, then only Noah would be saved. But it wasn't just a covenant with Noah. It was a covenant with Noah's family. But because Noah is the head of the household, so Noah is supposed to be representing the family. And so Noah was taking food for him and his family and for the animals as well. So, what do we learn today, guys? Hmm? What do we learn today? Uh, if you've been watching, then I'm pretty sure you at least now have a better understanding of that chapter. I mean, there's way more we could have talked about. But I want to keep it um, level 101 for the first, the newcomers. So that was, the, that, that's, Number part number four of the story of Noah. Next, we we'll like we'll look at chapter seven, and that is going to be an interesting chapter to look at. So, 
uh, again don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe right here and of course you can always ring the bell and if you're a new subscriber it's gonna show right here if you're a new subscriber put it down on the comment and say new subscriber that way when I see you I might uh, um, mention your name when, I'm, when I do the video Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I, I hope to see you guys again. This was TOV, the Open World TV. Until then, bye for now.